In this video, we are going to begin to investigate some concepts in two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy. We will look in this video in particular at so-called COSY, which stands for correlation spectroscopy. But first, let's just do a general overview of the differences between a one-dimensional NMR spectrum and a two-dimensional NMR spectrum. I'm specifically looking at how to recognize these two because there are a variety of different 1D experiments and a variety of different 2D experiments. So with a one-dimensional NMR spectrum, such as the one on the left here, which is the proton NMR spectrum of isobutanol, the compound shown here, what you will notice is that there is one frequency axis. And that's going to be true for all 1D NMR experiments is that there is one frequency axis. On the other hand, in a 2D NMR spectrum, such as the correlation spectroscopy spectrum shown on the right, there are two frequency axes. One frequency axis here, running horizontal, and another one running vertical, hence making it a two-dimensional plot. And what we are going to see is there are a wide variety of different two-dimensional NMR experiments that can be conducted, we are going to look at three of the most common and widely applicable types of 2D experiments that are run, starting with the correlation spectroscopy experiment in this video. Then we will look at the so-called HSQC experiment, heteronuclear single quantum coherence. And then finally, we will look at HMBC, heteronuclear multiple bond correlation, so that by the end of this series of videos, you will understand what information is being provided within each of these types of a representative two-dimensional NMR spectra. So let's get started with looking at what we can learn from a COSY spectrum as we are going through piecing together the full chemical structure of an organic molecule. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have for reference the proton NMR spectrum of isobutanol. And here we have zoomed in and enlarged the correlation spectroscopy spectrum. What the COSY spectrum is going to tell us, and we will go through how to sort out this information, is that COSY will indicate to us proton spins that are coupled to one another. So COSY is going to show proton spins that are coupled to one another. So when we say that the proton spins are coupled to one another, that rings a bell back to when we were discussing the multiplicities in proton NMR. When we looked at multiplicity, we were referring to protons that were spin coupled, causing signals to split into multiplets, such as doublets, triplets, quartets, doublets of doublets, etc. And so with the correlation spectroscopy experiment, what we will be able to deduce is exactly which protons are coupled to one another. And that will help us connect together parts and pieces of the molecule that will allow us to connect together spin systems. So COSY is going to allow assembly of spin systems. Spin systems being protons within the molecule that are spin coupled to one another. And when we were looking at which protons were coupled when we're looking in one dimensional NMR experiments, we generally saw that the protons that were coupled were either geminal to one another, meaning they're bonded to the same carbon, but the two protons are non-equivalent, meaning they are in different chemical environments because they are not freely rotating around carbon-carbon bonds. And we also saw that the coupled protons were protons that were vicinal to one another. So COSY is going to illustrate correlations it's going to allow us to correlate and determine which protons are geminal, in other words, separated by two bonds because they are bonded to exactly the same carbon and non-equivalent, and vicinal, which are going to be protons that are separated from one, other, one another by a grand total of four bonds. We could also occasionally see slightly longer range correlations depending upon the exact structure of the molecule. But generally what we're looking at is 
which protons are geminal but non-equivalent, meaning they are restrained and in different chemical environments as a result, or vicinal to one another. So in the structure of isobutanol, let's take a look at the COSY spectrum to validate that this holds true, that we can observe the geminal non-equivalent protons and the ones that are vicinal to one another to sort out the complete structure of this molecule. So I'm just going to redraw the structure of isobutanol here so that we have that for reference. And as we interpret the correlation spectrum here, the first thing that you will notice is if we were to draw a diagonal line through here, what we see is that there is a signal along that diagonal line at each of the locations where a one-dimensional NMR spectrum would show a signal. So in the 1D NMR spectrum, there was a proton at 1 ppm, and we see a strong signal there on this diagonal that is at around 1 ppm and 1 ppm. Similarly, when we come on down to here, we see a signal on the diagonal that corresponds to about 1.75 ppm, which is where we saw a signal here. So it's at 1.75 ppm coming across from here and coming down from here. In other words, it's matching that perfect diagonal. Similarly out here at around 3.5 ppm, we see a signal here that matches the diagonal going over to about 3.4 to 3.5 on the y-axis. And this diagonal, when we sketch this out, what this will tell us is just which peaks would be present in the proton NMR spectrum. So the peaks that we see here on this diagonal are just going to represent what was present in the 1D NMR experiment. And those we refer to as the diagonal peaks. So the diagonal peaks are not going to give us a whole lot of information about the structure of the molecule because we could get that information out of the 1D NMR experiment. We can see a signal here at about 0.9 or 1, all the way down this diagonal. That's just showing, since those match on the x and y axis, those are showing the same signals that we would see in a 1D NMR spectrum. So those diagonal peaks correspond to the peaks that would be in a 1D NMR spectrum. On the other hand, all of the other peaks that we see in this spectrum are referred to, instead of as the diagonal peaks, they are referred to as the cross peaks. And the cross peaks are what are going to be valuable and useful out of this. So cross peak examples would be here, here, and then on the other side of the diagonal, up here, over here, and even perhaps some weak cross peak showing up there. Take it with a grain of salt though, because it's possible that's just some noise in the spectrum if it doesn't match up with a signal that we'd see from the proton NMR spectrum. So on both axes, the X and Y axis, we have proton NMRs plotted. And then what the cross peaks are showing us is which protons are spin coupled. In other words, if we look at the signal that we see, say right here, what we can do is deduce that the signal that we are seeing at 1.75 or so is spin coupled with, following this down, the signal that is at about 0.9 or 1 ppm. So this is indicating to us that the protons that are present at 1.75 ppm are on the same carbon atom or adjacent carbon atoms to the protons that are showing up at 0.9 ppm. And we can use that information in combination with the 1D NMR spectrum and aspects of that, such as the integrals, which are labeled here in the 1D NMR spectrum and I just highlighted in on there to help us in solving the complete chemical structure of this molecule. So in the case of that 1.75 ppm signal that correlates with the 0.9 ppm signal, if we went in and evaluated each of the chemical shifts in this molecule, 
But what we would see is that the two methyl groups there are equivalent protons because we can freely rotate around the carbon-carbon bond. So it would be at 0.9 ppm. That integrates to 6. So our 6 protons right here represents the two methyl groups. Then there is another proton right here in blue, which that would integrate to one proton. And we saw that in our NMR spectrum, our 2D NMR cozy spectrum, this 0.9 ppm signal that represented those six protons correlated with a signal at 1.75 ppm. And that signal at 1.75 ppm integrated to one proton. So that's represented by this one proton right here. So that one proton we can list as showing up at 1.75 ppms. And then we can follow further on down the line here to determine what else is that 1.75 ppm signal correlated with. So we saw the 1.75 ppm signal here was correlated with the two methyl group signal there. And if we continue following that further across the page, starting with this 1.75 here going across the page, we get to the diagonal peak. That's not going to tell us anything. We continue on over and we get over to here and we see another cross peak, which is going to be diagnostic of what else that proton at 1.7 pp ppms correlates with. So that's going to tell us what is bonded over here on the right. And so what we can say is that based on this cross peak here, that the 1.75 ppm signal are coupled in the same spin system with the protons that are at 3.4 or so ppm. And so what that will tell us is that on the other side here, this has to be the protons that show up at 3.4 ppm. So this is our 3.4 ppm and that had an integral of two. So I'm going to label that as 2H because if we went back to our proton NMR, this signal is at 3.4 ppm. We said integrated to 2.22, which rounds down to two protons here. And so we can show based on this set of cross peaks, the cross peak here, and then going on across to here, that the signal at 1.75 ppm is spin coupled to both the proton that is at 0.9 ppm and the ones as well at 3.4 ppm, which allows us to place this proton at 1.75 ppm vicinal to the protons that show up at 0.9 ppm and the protons that show up at 3.4 ppm. And so in cases where we are looking at very complex molecules, we can continue doing this sort of pattern all the way through the molecule to piece together individual spin systems. That is protons that are coupled to one another to continue on down the chain. So if this were a longer chain here, rather than stopping right here at the 3.4 ppms, we could look at what that 3.4 ppm signal was coupled to further on down the chain and then keep doing that over and over for each proton that we saw along the chain to piece together the structure of the molecule. Now, I should also mention that there is one signal in the proton NMR spectrum right here at about 2.6 ppm that integrates to one that we haven't mentioned within our cozy spectrum. And that signal is the signal that corresponds to our hydroxy proton. Generally, what we will see with protons that are directly bonded to nitrogens and oxygens is that those appear in our proton spectra as singlets and that if they show up in a cozy spectrum, their correlation signals are very, very weak. In other words, they are not strongly spin coupled at all to other atoms within the molecule. And so that is definitely true here that when we look at the signal that shows up at 2.6 ppms and we come up here looking for cross peaks, we see there are no cross peaks for that hydroxy signal. And that is typical 
for protons that show up in the spectrum as singlets. Now that we have had a chance to look at correlation spectroscopy, what we are going to do in the next video is look at an additional type of 2D NMR spectroscopy referred to as a heteronuclear single quantum coherence or HSQC experiment.